You are currently the only person in this conference.
Now, good morning. Yes, if you can hear me, you can confirm. And uh, welcome to our today's class. So we are starting a bit late. I had a challenge with uh, with my sound, but I issued some work to be done. I issued some work to be done. Uh, there was problem 12. I don't know if you can see very well. And problem 13. If you cannot see very well, you alert me so that uh, I can be able to uh, try and zoom out as much as possible. Okay. So we are working on that. So I hope you've worked out and uh, you have the answers with you. Okay. I hope you've worked out and you have the answers uh, with you. If there's a problem uh, with uh, working those, uh, uh, obtaining solutions for those two uh, particular sums or particular questions, uh, then you can let me know. They're basically simultaneous equations that uh, you're expected to form and work together uh, with the two equations uh, to obtain their known values. Yes, so uh, trust you're doing well wherever you are, trust in well, wherever you are. Now, so last week we, we were doing simultaneous equations. Last week we were doing simultaneous equations. And I mentioned that we are going to, uh, of interest to us, is only going to be those equations with uh, two variables, okay? of interest to us is only equations of two variables. Like for instance, what is provided here, okay? What is provided here has um, two variables, I1 and I2, okay? So those are the type of uh, simultaneous equations that um, are going to be of interest uh, to us. Yes, so you can try solve them out. If there's an issue, then uh, you will let me know. Now I just move to the next type of equation. And us to move to the next type of equations. That is quadratic equations. Quadratic equations. So you let me know if you can be able to see my content. You let me know if you can be able to see my content. Uh, how well they look on your side. Okay. So apart from uh, uh, simultaneous equations, I mentioned that uh, in simultaneous equations, the independent variable has a power of one or degree or order of one. Okay. For quadratic equations, the degree is two. The power we are talking about here is two. Okay. So um Basically, the difference between the two equations is the modeling, the way uh, the two equations uh, model different situations. What is a situation or a scenario that is being modeled by uh, a linear equation is not fit for a quadratic equation. And the other way around is also true. So a scenario that you need a quadratic equation, uh, trying to model it with a linear equation is not going to work for you, okay? So we are saying in a quadratic equation, the unknown value is called the root of the equation. Okay, or the value of the unknown is called the root of the equation. So uh, in a quadratic equation, if you are solving out uh, the value of x, the value of y, the value of z, then uh, essentially what you're doing is you're looking for the root of that particular equation. Okay? You're looking for the root of that particular equation. So I've mentioned the uh, issue of power, so we are mentioning it here. The quantity is two, okay? The quantity is two. Uh, and now, of course, the concept of uh, dependent and, um, and independent variables, you need to understand that, okay? You can need to understand that. So independent variable is the one that uh, 
if it changes, then it affects the dependent variable. Any small change, any light change on um, on the dependent variable, on the independent variable, will have a significant change on the dependent. So when we are talking about those two terms, then uh, we really need to be uh, in the same uh, position. Okay. So this is an example of a quadratic equation. That's an example of a quadratic equation. And of uh, very important to uh, to that is that the ordinary way of representing a quadratic equation is that the powers here must be in a decreasing order or descending order. Okay, they have to be reducing in a given nature. So if we have power two here, we must have power one here, and we have power zero here. So the coefficient one has an x raised to power zero, and we had uh, talked about that in our uh, previous uh, content, that uh, when you're talking about a power zero, we are talking about uh, one. So anything raised to power zero is one. So this order is very important. This order here is very, very important. So that's how quadratic equations uh, look like, okay? So what are the importance of this type of quadratic equations? We're going to see some application area on how uh, these quadratic equations are used, especially very important for those people who are modeling uh, uh, structural designs, okay? model structural design. So as a, a student in IT, the expectation is that uh, you need this foundation because uh, if you are to work with a software or if you are to develop a software that uh, is going to be used in design, then you must know what you are uh, really working on. Okay, so if you're working on a, a scenario where there is a, a, a solution to be modeled in form of quadratic equation, then your background must be very clear on quadratic equations for you to be able uh, to move forward. So that's why sometimes we revisit these concepts, apart from the fact that uh, it's a requirement that uh, 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 students coming for IET and uh, DBLT um, and certificate join this particular course as a bridging mathematics, okay? So that's why you see we are not really doing uh, very tough mathematics. It's just trying to bridge the gap so that uh, those who did not do well so much in high school, we just bring you on the same line with those who maybe did so well and then we move uh, on. Okay, so we have ways of uh, working with these quadratic equations. We can solve it uh, by factorization, by completing square, and of course the third one uh, should be by graph. So there's graph, okay, and then of course we have uh, the quadratic equation. Okay, we have the quadratic equation, which is an essentially. Um, uh, a derivative of, or a product of a completing square method, okay? It's a product of completing square method. So those are the four major ways and how we can uh, be able to uh, find the root of this uh, type of quadratic equations. So we look at uh, uh, the three, maybe the factorization, completing square, maybe the quadratic. The graph, we're not going to look at it at this particular point. Okay, so uh, let's begin by problem one. Let's begin by problem one. Solve the equations by factorization. Solve the equations by factorization. So uh, factorization from the name, uh, the major essence here is uh, you look for factors. You look for factors. Uh, that can easily uh, be combined together to produce a specific uh, outcome, can easily be combined together to produce a specific outcome. So we have equation one, so we can solve one then move to a different method because uh, uh, we don't need to uh, uh, repeat quite a number of uh, uh, the, the methods. So uh, let's look at part A of the of problem one, we have um, 
uh, quadratic equation in the form of x squared plus 2x minus 8 is equals to 0. So we are looking at uh, solutions through factorization. And I've mentioned here, we look for factors. We look for factors that uh, we can put together to be able to uh, sort out ourselves. So what are we looking at here? In uh, How do we come up with our factors? How do we come up with our factors? Anybody? How do we come up with our factors? What guides us? What guide us? So we have what we call a product. And then we have what we call a sum. Okay. So there are two things, product, and then we have sum. So our product is the coefficient of x squared and the constant value. So you multiply them together. So in our case, our coefficient is one. We multiply by eight. Negative eight. So we get negative eight. Then our sum is uh, the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x. So we are saying down here that uh, we are looking at uh, a scenario where we're looking at a scenario where we need to have eight, and at the same time we need to have two negative eight, and we need to have two. So we are looking at uh, numbers that, if you put together in form of addition, you get two and numbers that if you put in form of a, a multiplication, you get your product as negative eight. And we've settled on negative four, uh, positive four and negative two. So if I say plus four minus two, I get two. Okay, I get two. If I say, plus four times or multiplied by negative two, I get negative eight, okay? So those two factors qualifies uh, to be enjoined in that equation to expand. It's kind of expanding that equation, to expand that equation to represent uh, the coefficient of x, okay, the coefficient of x. So you can rearrange that equation and have your plus four, yeah, and then two. So that is where we obtain these two brackets. That's where we obtain those two brackets x plus 4 and x minus 2. So that is where we obtain those uh, two brackets. So you can write here yeah, so that when I move to the next item, uh, the next page or uh, the next slide, you can be able to follow through.
Okay, so the continuation of um, uh, provide uh, finding the um, the full solution is there. Okay. So our final solution is here. Our final solution is there. The rest are just an uh, explanation on uh, really what we are doing. Okay. So these are the factors. These are the factors. So if you expand these two brackets, the expectation is that you should be able to go back to the original equation. Okay. If you expand those two brackets, the expectation is that you should be able to go to the original equation. So you equate each of them to zero and then solve. Equate each of them to zero and then solve. So don't confuse these are continuation uh, the, the, this was the the beginning i just ignored it because i did not want to, to go into um, definition of a factorization and the rest okay we just went to an example directly but it's the beginning of the of this other slide so there is a Question B here, you can just pick it, uh, maybe try it at some point. This question B there, 3x raised to power 2 minus 11x minus 4 is equals to 0. Minus 11x minus 4 is equals to 0. So those are uh, those content that we are issuing out. You uh, can do them maybe uh, after we've stopped. We're going to stop at about maybe nine thirty. Yeah. So you can do them, and then uh, I'll create a discussion forum for our portal. Then you post them. What you uh, just post maybe a picture or any. Uh, I'll try and ensure that you can be able to attach. So they form part of our class uh, because in a real scenario in class. Uh, we should be doing a topic or a concept, we do an example together, uh, we see what uh, we are able to do, and then we move. So that's what we are trying to replicate here. So the examples you can do, then post your results, uh, then we can be able to compare notes. We can move to the next uh, item. So basically, more examples on uh, factorization. More examples of factorization. You can just have a look at them. Uh, this is a continuation from our, our previous uh, our slide. This is a continuation from our previous slide. That is from our previous slide.
So these are slightly a little bit different, okay? Uh, the way that it has been framed, the question, determine the roots of those two particular quadratic equations, x squared uh, minus 6x plus 9 is equals to 0. Then 4x squared minus 25 is equals to 0. So basically, you, uh, the expectation is that uh, you obtain the roots of those uh, particular equations. So I'm sure you know where we are coming up with three, negative three and negative three, so that we can be able to get negative six. And if we multiply them, we can be able to get positive nine, okay? So the same, uh, now this is what I was talking about. So look at this equation here. Four X squared minus 25 is equal to zero, okay? So the, the, definitely there is something that is not, uh, uh, there's a term that is missing. Uh, we can, uh, by default, call it the third term, the, the second term. The second term is missing from there. And because we need to move from x squared to x to uh, x to power 1 and then x to power 0. Okay? But now that we note with the standing, we can still provide a solution uh, to that. We can still provide a solution to that. So you can see the interesting bit that they, they did there. So they only looked at the first term and the third term, okay, the first term and the third term. Okay, so another interesting uh, version is here. I hope you've uh, worked out that. Another interesting version is here. Where you're given the roots, that is problem four. Problem four. Where you're given the roots, and you're told to determine the equation. <coughs> you're given the roots and you're told to determine the equation. So that means you'll be forced to get some unknown values. 
uh, given that you understand how the rules operate, given that you understand how the, the rules operate. So they've used uh, known values here, yeah, known values that is alpha and beta. Okay. And then they've assigned them those two roots that have been given to us. They've assigned them those two roots that have been given to us. And then the interesting thing that uh, is being done, the interesting thing that uh, is being done, you look at what we did, for instance, in uh, uh, this equation or the, the previous equation. Look at how we solved this one. Okay. Or how we solved this one. So if it was 2x plus 5, then our answer becomes negative. If it was 2x minus 5, our answer becomes positive. Because we know one of the, uh, uh, the unknowns here, or the known, will cross the equal sign and change the, uh, the, the sign. Okay, so that's what is happening here. So we have negative 2, meaning there's possibility that when it was within the roots, when it was within the roots, the brackets, then it was a positive. There's that possibility, okay? There's that possibility. Okay, so that you need to uh, master that kind of concept. Know how to operate uh, with those values. Know how to operate uh, with those values, okay? So we'll have this. As one of the roots, then we'll have this as the other, the, the root. Okay. Then you just do the normal multiplication of opening up brackets uh, from your uh, basic mathematics opening up brackets, then you'll be able to obtain uh, your equation here. You'll be able to obtain your equation from that end. As 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 is equals to 0. So the only challenge of the trick is here. The trick is here. Knowing those roots, then forming brackets or the factors using the roots. So that's where the trick is. That's where the trick is, okay? Moving from there, that point. Okay, so that so will be good for factorization, unless there's a question. Unless there's a question. So the applications questions, we'll, we'll look at them maybe later. We can post them in our forums and uh, discuss them. So you can take problem five for your own consumption. You can take problem five for your own consumption. 
you try and see if you can be able to uh, obtain any value there. Try and see if you can be able to obtain any value there. Esther, Esther, are you a new student? Hello, Esther. Esther, is Esther there? Is your first time? Or is your first lecture? Is it your first lecture? But you may not really. Okay, okay, okay. You have a Cisco account. Okay, great, 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 great. So you can proceed, unless there's a question. Any question? Great, we can proceed. So we're moving to factorization, uh, not factorization, completing square method. We're moving to completing square method. And we're saying that uh, there are two types of uh, uh, the, the, there's uh, this word uh, square in um, in mathematics. Okay, there's this word square in mathematics, and now uh, then there are these numbers that we call rational and irrational numbers. So the whole concept of uh, rational and irrational numbers is based on the, the so-called perfect square. Okay. So we are saying, if you're given an expression of this form, or we are given an expression of x minus 3 uh, into brackets squared, then we say those particular expressions represent what we call a perfect square. They represent what we call a perfect square. So obtaining the the real value or obtaining the uh, the exact value of x, if you are given such expressions, then you need to get the root, which can either be the square root, the cube root, the fourth root, the fifth, the tenth root, and so on and so forth. So that's what you need to obtain. So we are saying, if you are, have a scenario of this nature, if you have a scenario of this nature, then that is how you expect it to obtain your answer. Then we say in mathematics, uh, the assumption is that the root of any uh, figure or any integer is can either be a positive or a negative. Okay, the root of any figure can either be a positive 
on a negative. So that's why we have the plus or minus uh, preceding the, um, the the root sign there. Okay. But now completing square uh, borrows a lot from that uh, particular concept. So we can rearrange our quadratic equation uh, to form what we call a perfect square. Okay. And rearrange our quadratic equation to form what we call a perfect square. Then from there, we can balance the equation. So we are saying the process of rearranging uh, any quadratic equation into a perfect square. Before you can obtain the roots is what we call completing square method or is what we call completing square. So that pro uh, process of obtaining a perfect uh, square in an equation before you can solve is what we call completing square method. So we can look at an example and uh, find out, find out exactly how we have a look at this. Remember, in my part of my introduction, I mentioned that completing square is what gives birth to quadratic equation. Okay? If it is through that process that we obtain a quadratic uh, equation. So let's look at the example that has been issued there. X plus A squared is equal to X squared plus 2X plus A squared. Okay, so how do we obtain the perfect square that uh, we are looking at? How do we obtain the perfect square we are looking at? In the example we are issued there, or the example we are given there, uh, we are told that uh, for you to obtain a perfect square uh, from x squared plus 2a, ax, okay, then you need to get half, um, half, half, the coefficient of x, half the coefficient of x squared and add to both sides of the equation. Okay, so this is what we are talking about. Half of the coefficient of x. Coefficient of x is 2a. So we are picking half. Half. Okay. So another example is also given here. Half the coefficient of x squared, then you add. When you add to both sides, then we say you've obtained what we call a perfect square. So that's the original uh, rule, or that's the foundation of completing square method. That's the foundation of completing square method. So when we'll be talking about balancing the equation or what you do on the left, you also have to do on the right, uh, then that is what we mean. Pick half the coefficient of x squared, put on the both sides so that you balance that equation. At that particular point, we say that you've obtained uh, what we call a perfect square. Let's look at an example. Let's look at an example. So we have an example, problem six. Problem six. So of course you rearrange the equation first you arrange the equation so that you have the left and the right side, okay? Uh, our original equation in a quadratic uh, should be in form of uh, ax squared plus bx is equals to c. Uh, no, not equals to c, uh, plus c is, is equals to zero. 
that should be our original uh, form of a quadratic equation, a quadratic um, uh, function. So if you're given this, if you're given this, then we can equate it to zero. We can equate it to zero by closing three uh, to the left side of the equation. Then we say is equals to zero. So at this particular point, we have uh, a perfect, not a perfect square, but a perfect quadratic equation in form of or in terms of representation. Then, if you're using completing square method, you're using completing square method, the coefficient of x squared must be one, or what they call unity. Okay, so that means if there's something that is not one, then you'll have to uh, rearrange that equation. You'll have to um, find a way of reducing that. Uh, to one, a perfect way of reducing any figure in mathematics by division, okay? Perfect way is by division. So that is what is provided here. So you divide across the board or divide the whole equation uh, with the two. If you divide 2x squared uh, by two and you leave the rest, that equation changes to something new. It's no longer the original equation that uh, I was given. Okay. So let's try and, uh, uh, fi and find out the value of x. Let's try and find the value of x from this equation here.
Okay, so uh, you can, uh, I've just changed the screen a little bit, the presentation a little bit. When I was making those slides, uh, I missed, uh, I think my one of the pages did not uh, attach itself. Yes, so th that, that's what we should be able to get after our division process. That's what we should be able to get after our division process. So we should be able to get something like x squared uh, plus 5 over 2 x is equals to uh, 3 over 2. So the next item we need to do is now picking the half. Is now picking the half. Okay. So add both sides, add to both sides of the equation, half of the coefficient of x squared. So coefficient of x is 5 over 2. So pick half. Pick half. Then you add to both sides of the equation. Okay. Balance the both sides of the equation. Then at that particular point or that particular moment, uh, we say that uh, we've obtained a perfect square uh, on the left hand side of the equation. We've obtained a perfect square on the left hand side of the equation. Okay, so you can factor out. You can factor out. Uh, I'd mentioned that uh, in a quadratic equation, it should be x squared x power 1 x power 0. Now in our equation there, in our equation there, if it is a model that we are representing, that means if we represent x squared, then definitely x can be found within that particular model. Okay, so that's why we say we can as well put x plus 5 over 4 then squared. So meaning we've picked x squared and we've picked 5 over 4. Then we've uh, factor them into a, inside a bracket and the square uh, out, okay? So you put them inside a bracket and the square out. Then you solve on the right-hand side of the equation, solve the right-hand side of the equation. That one you can solve with a calculator or you can solve with a mathematical uh, process, okay? So step five, you solve that particular point. And you obtain your value of 49 over 16. You obtain your value of 49 divided by 16. Okay, 49 divided by 16. Then to find your answer, or to find your answer, you can now square both sides. You can now square both sides. So step six says there that take the square root of both sides of the equation. Take the square root of both sides of the equation. Then you can now obtain your answer. So on our left hand side, on our left hand side, if we square, then it is the square and the square root that will cancel each other. Therefore, it means we'll remain with x plus 5 out of 4. On the other side, if we do our square root, we do square root for the numerator and square root for the denominator. Okay, we do the square root for numerator and square root for the denominator. And then we obtain our 7 out of 4. Then mathematically, uh, from algebra, you can obtain x. So, as I mentioned before, a square root is assumed to be plus or minus. Okay. So to find x, we can have x is equals to plus seven over four minus five over four, or x is equals to minus seven over four minus five over four. So it's plus 7 over 4 minus 5 over 4 or minus 7 over 4 minus 5 over 4.
then at that point you can completely or you can comfortably say you've sorted out your value you've sorted out your value as usual a quadratic equation should have two roots quadratic equation should have two roots so that if you present it in a graph if you present it in a graph then you your model will have two points at which the graph touches the x-axis that's why we uh, we call them x is equal to printing those equations in graphical formats any question on that any question on that swally swally so you will um share your cameras when we are finishing up so that i can mark the my register and of course, uh, being first year students, I can be able to know who is who from a distance, okay? Yes, so if there is no question, then try problem nine. Not problem nine, problem seven. Try problem seven. If no question, then try problem seven. And then you give type your answers there in three uh, significant figures. Type your answers there in three significant figures.
So that is what we expected to get. X is equals to 1.22, or X is equals to 3. Negative, of course, negative 1.22, or negative 3.28. Correct to three significant figures. So I believe you're getting something close to that, or um, either plus or minus uh, 0 0.01. Okay, if you're not able to get that, then you can let me know. If you're not able to get that, you can let me know. So that's uh, part of the, the process, of course, making a coefficient of x a unity or a, a 1. Then you pick the halves so that you obtain a perfect square on the left-hand side of the equation. Then now you have a perfect square. You can obtain your roots. And finally, you arrive at your answer. Finally, you arrive at your answer. Alex, so exactly what? Where did you miss? Which area or which section did you miss? How to solve problem seven? Or what did you miss? Yes, what did you miss? Or oh, breaking down the equation. Now I'd mentioned that you begin by obtaining a, a unity coefficient for x squared. That's very important. Then once you do that, you can rearrange your equation further. Once you do that, you can rearrange your equation further. Pick the term without the x and take it on the right-hand side of the equation, like what we've done here. Negative 4. 4 taken on the other side becomes negative 4. Then after that, after that, okay, so that's what I'm talking about, plus 4 becomes negative 4, plus 4 becomes negative 4. Then after that, pick half of the coefficient of x. Coefficient of x is 9 over 2. So its half is going to be 9 over 2 times half. Okay, that's essentially what we are saying here. So it's going to be 9 over 4. Then add it to both sides of the equation. 
to obtain a perfect square on the left hand side. Okay, a perfect square on the left hand side. So you're going to have nine over four squared added to the left, nine over four squared added to the right. Then from there, we had mentioned that in quadratic equation, it's a flow x squared x, x power zero, okay? So that means if we have x squared plus nine over two x plus nine over four in bracket squared, then we can factor this equation into x plus nine over four, where we are using x squared and nine over four squared. So x plus nine over four, and because both of them were squared, we can as well put them in bracket and put the square out. Because if you open it, you'll go back to uh, the equation that we have, okay? If you open this figure here, you'll go back to this equation that we have. The x squared plus nine over two x plus nine over four squared, okay? So you can factor them out. Then on the right side of the equation, you can solve using a calculator solve using a calculator then from there you can now square both sides get a, not square both sides but uh, obtain a square root from both sides on the left and on the right okay so if you obtain a square root of both sides on the left and the right then that is what you get on the left you get 1.031 that one should be from a calculator of course you can't obtain uh, the root of 17 over 16 uh, uh, offered, that should be from the calculator. And then on our right side, we're going to have x plus 9 over 4. Then from there, you can now obtain your value of x as either x is equal to plus 1.031 plus 9 over 4, minus 9 over 4, or minus 1.031 minus 9 over 4. So whichever you take, whichever direction you pick from there, then you'll obtain your values as provided there. 1.1, 1 1.22, 3.28, all of them are negative values. All of them are negative values. Yes, so um, if that is proper, then uh, if there's any question I can answer, if uh, we don't have a question, then I'm going to post some discussion on our forum, uh, maybe application question, we can try and see what we can be able to achieve from there. Okay, so any question, any question? Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Then we meet next week. Thank you.